Welcome back to the channel, Warhammer Man back in the studio, and today we're going to take a look at the official rules for the Void's Card Corsairs. Before we get started, make sure to like and subscribe for Warhammer 40,000, Kill Team, Necromunda, Age of Sigmar, and Warkai content as well. I also want to give a special shout out to Glass Half Dead for his early access to the rules. Uh, we were able to grab a couple screenshots and uh, make this video possible, so give him a like, the love over on his Kill Team channel. So starting, uh, we're going to kind of go out of order a little bit here, uh, but I think it'll make a little more sense for how to build the kill team and special rules, etc. Uh, so getting started with the operatives, first we're going to take one Voidscard Felark. He will be the leader of our kill team, and uh, he is going to be equipped with one of the following options. Shuriken Rifle, Shuriken Pistol, and Power Weapon, or Neuro Disruptor and Power Weapon. Uh, because of the exclusivity of the Neuro Disruptor, it does have short range, but I think that's the way to go. Uh, and then either way, he'll be equipped with a power weapon for close combat abilities, so he'll be strong. A uh, little closer up with this build, but I think that's the way to go. Next, we're going to choose our eight Corsairs. Uh, it is important to notice that we're only going to get nine members in our team, even though there's ten in the kit. Uh, so for each of the following... With the exception of our first choice, the Void Scarred Warriors, uh, you can only select one per kill team. And you cannot have a gunner and a heavy gunner, so you have to choose between those two. So first we have the Void Scarred Warrior equipped with one of the following options. So he can have a Shuriken Pistol and Power Weapon, or Shuriken Pistol, Shuriken Rifle, and Fist. If you're going to take any Warriors, which I don't think typically you will, the real choice is here. Do you want to gear them up with a power weapon and a pistol for closer range but combat abilities? Or do you want to give them the rifle, the pistol, and the fist so they'll be much worse in combat, much better at shooting? Next we have the Void Scarred Gunner, equipped with Shuriken Pistol, Fist, and one of the following. He can have either the Blaster or the Shredder. Uh, the Blaster is very strong and I think that's the way to go. And I think the Void Scarred Gunner is the way to build your operatives. Uh, next we have the Void Scarred Heavy Gunner, equipped with a Shuriken Pistol, Fist, and one of the following, Shuriken Cannon or Wraith Cannon. While these are both good options, uh, I think also the Shredder is okay, but I think the way to go is the Blaster, and that's probably what you're going to include 90% of the time. Uh, next we have the Void Scarred Starstorm Duelist, Void Scarred Kernite Hunter, the Voidscard Shade Runner, Voidscard Karnathi, Voidscard Bait Dealer, Voidscard Wayseeker, and Voidscard Soul Weaver. Uh, and I think typically you're going to want to take one of each of the seven specialists, and then the Gunner, and then the Voidscard Felark. Uh, and then their ability has already been previewed. Uh, but it is the Eldari Raiders. Each time this operative is activated, it can perform a free dash action during that activation. Uh, so that is the kill team and the operatives. Going to have 9 total, even though 10 come in the kit. So maybe you want to build an extra heavy gunner, or maybe you want to build one of the regular warriors. Possibly even do some magnetization, if you like. Uh, so let's take a look at the data cards, and uh, kind of get a, a uh, feel for the kill team. So... The Void Scarred Warrior, this is just your basic trooper. Movement 3, APL 2, GA 1, Defense 3, Save 4 plus, and Wounds 8. Uh, and then the Shuriken Pistol stats are going to be 4 attacks, hitting on 3s with 3 4 damage, and range 6 rending. The Shuriken Rifle has the same stats, but no limit to the range. Uh, power weapon is attacks 4, 3+, plus, 4, 6, and lethal 5+, plus, so obviously very strong. And then their basic fists are 3 attacks, 3+, plus, and 2, 3. Uh, so the most important thing to pay attention to right here is, is the massive difference between taking a power weapon and a fist, and then you're giving up your range. So you're giving up unlimited range on your shuriken weapon, but you're gaining much better ability in combat. Unfortunately, these are not super durable, so uh, not necessarily going to want to be in combat. So, got to kind of pick and choose your battles for sure. Uh, so, for the take aim special ability on this guy, the unique action, 
Uh, it does cost one AP until the end of this operative's activation. The shuriken rifle this operative is equipped with gains the balanced special rule. This operative cannot perform this action if he is within square of an enemy operative. Uh, so he's basically aiming for one AP, shooting for one AP, uh, and then you're going to have your free dash on top of that. So if you're not moving, you can still dash either before or after and then improve your ability to shoot. Not bad, but you are going to be exposed unless you're already in place to shoot someone. So pretty good. Uh, for an APL2 team, the free dash makes a difference here because normally you would not be able to move at all. You'd be able to take aim and shoot or you'd be able to move or dash and then shoot. But now you can take aim, shoot, and then move. I'm sorry, and then dash. Or you can dash into position, take aim, and then shoot. So not bad. Definitely kind of has like that hit and run sort of thing to it. Giving up a little bit of mobility for the ability to basically gun something down much more efficiently. Uh, so next we have the Void Scarred Gunner. Uh, so this is your key model in the team. I think one of the most important. Uh, all the stats are the same. And then if you're not familiar with the blaster, it is four shots hitting on threes, five damage, six on a crit, and AP two. So it hits very hard. Most people are not going to be able to save next to it. It's pretty much going to kill just about anything. Uh, next we have the shredder. So it's five shots, one extra shot. Still hitting on threes, three and four on a crit. And then it's blast circle. Not bad, probably better for taking out like something with a five up save or something like that. Uh, but not going to be particularly good against smaller amount of kill teams that are like more well armored. Uh, and then we have the pistol and the fist also. Uh, next we have the heavy gunner, uh, still very good, but I just don't think any of them is better than the blaster. The most important thing is the blaster has unlimited bore range. Uh, so it has the same range as the Shuriken Cannon and the Wraith Cannon. And hits really hard and doesn't have any restrictions to movement. Uh, or cast any extra AP. Cost any extra AP to shoot. Uh, so for the Shuriken Cannon, it is 5 shots hitting on 3s with 4 or 5. It has Fusillade, so you can mix your shots between guys that are close to each other. But it does have Heavy and Unwieldy. And then it also has Rending. So the heavy says you can only move three, so you're allowed to use your free dash. And then unwieldy costs you two action points to shoot with it. So again, you can get a move because you normally wouldn't be able to move, but with the free dash, you can still get a dash in. But the unwieldy means it's going to cost you your two action points to shoot with it. It does hit very hard, though. Uh, five shots means at best someone can save three of them and statistically you're probably going to hit with at least four or five and then the rending ability means that if you get one crit which you're statistically favored to get uh, you can automatically have a second crit as well so going to hit pretty hard with that one uh, next we have the wraith cannon four attacks hitting on threes uh, six and then three AP 2, Heavy, Unwieldy, and Mortal Wounds 4. So it's 6 on a hit, 3 on a crit, with an additional 4 Mortal Wounds that can't be blocked. Uh, and then with AP 2, it's going to take away 2 of your opponent's saves, and then obviously you can only move maximum of 3, and it is going to cost you uh, 2 AP to shoot it. Uh, so very strong, but again, because of the restrictions to your movement, uh, it is very good. But I don't know if it's going to be better than the uh, blaster. Now, arguably, you could do some pretty awesome stuff with that Wraith Cannon. So, to be able to do four mortal wounds to somebody, you know, potentially hitting them with multiple shots, theoretically. Potentially critting them at least once, maybe twice. Could be pretty strong. Uh, but I'm not sure if it's worth giving up the mobility for, so... And the reason I keep saying that about the mobility is one of the best things about this team is their ability to have that free dash. Because they can essentially perform hit and runs. So if you have a guy like tucked out of range or doesn't have a shot on anyone, say with your blaster, 
you can move your six inches into position. That's one AP. You can take a shot for your second AP, and then you can take your free dash and move three inches back behind cover or out of sight. So essentially you're functioning like a three AP team, even though you only have two. So with the heavy gunner, you're giving up either the move to get into position or the move to get back out of position. One of the strongest things about the three APL kill teams is they're able to essentially move, shoot, and then move again. And uh, that's very powerful. Obviously you can only do one normal move, but you could do a move, shoot, dash, or dash, shoot, move. Uh, so next we have the voice guard Starstorm Duelist. Uh, so when you say Duelist, he has dual pistols. Uh, one is the Fusion Pistol, which is four attacks hitting on threes with five three, range square, AP two, mortal wounds three. So you do have to get up very close for this pistol. You know, you got to be within three inches, but five three with three mortal wounds means you're doing five six and three of those are mortal wounds with AP two. So Fusion Pistol does quite a bit of damage, can pretty much kill anyone. Uh, well, most anyone in a round of combat. So, And then obviously has some special rules as well. So he has the ability to quick on the trigger. This operative can use a pistol barrage and shoot action while within engagement range of an enemy operative. If it does in the select valid targets of that shooting phase, you can only select enemy operatives within the operative's engagement range to be targeted and then the pistol barrage is one AP uh, make a shooting attack with the fusion pistol and make a shooting attack with the shuriken pistol uh, and then this action is treated as a shoot action this operative cannot perform this action if it has a conceal order so for one action point you basically just get to shoot with both pistols but it does count as your shoot action if you're within engagement range, you have to shoot at a guy that's in engagement range. If you're not in engagement range, you can shoot up to six inches away with the shuriken pistol or three inches away with the fusion pistol at different guys or the same guy. So very good. Definitely strong. At this point in time, we know you probably have a neuro disruptor. Well, we haven't got that far, but we know we probably have the blaster and then this fusion pistol with another pistol as well. So pretty hard hitters so far. Uh, so next we have the Void Scarred, Kernite Hunter. Uh, so he has the Shuriken Pistol. And I may say he, she, but, you know, I don't know what their actual male or female models are. Uh, so Shuriken Pistol and a power weapon. So equipped for close range shooting, definitely for combat. Uh, so the Falche is one AP. Select one enemy operative with a conceal order that is visible to this operative and roll 1d6, adding one to the result for each of the following. The enemy operative is within six of this operative. The enemy operative is not ready. The enemy operative is not within triangle of heavy cover. So basically it improves your roll the more accessible they are based on these things. So if they've already activated that's plus one to your roll. If you're within six of them, that's plus two. If they're not within heavy cover, that's plus three. If any of those are missing, it's plus two. If, if you only have one of those, it's plus one. On a uh, six plus until the end of the turning point, friendly Corsair Void Scarred operatives target that enemy operative as if it has an engage order. This operative cannot perform this action if it is within engagement order. And the important thing here is this is allowing multiple operatives to shoot at that operative as if it had an engage order. As where the other like spotters, you pick one of your guys and one of their guys, and then that guy of yours has a benefit against that guy of theirs. With this, you pick a key target, the bird picks it out, you roll. If you get a six or better, it's in trouble. So uh, you cannot use your reroll on this ability though, because it's not a regular. Uh, thing that you can use a reroll on so there is definitely some luck of the dice here so you do want to obviously have you know as many of these things as possible 
It's not just going to be like a given ability, but it is pretty strong. Uh, definitely cool. Definitely going to want to have this one in your kill team. Uh, so next we have the Void Scarred Shade Runner. Again, all the same stats. Uh, Shuriken Pistol and then Throwing Blades and Hecatari Blades. Uh, so the Throwing Blades are 4 attacks, 3 plus, 2 4 damage, range 6 silent. So you can be in a conceal order and throw these, which is pretty good. They are nice. They do decent damage, but the most important thing is you can be concealed and attack with them as where normally you would have to be in an engage order. Uh, so it's basically like sniper blades. Uh, then we have the Hakatari blades. These are a combat weapon up close. Four attacks, three plus to hit, three five damage. So pretty strong in combat. Lethal five plus and relentless. Uh, so you get four attacks with rerolls and crit on five and it's three five damage so you can pretty easily expect to get at least two crits so these can hit pretty hard uh, and then the one of the best abilities so far we've seen the uh, slicing attack so for one ap you can perform a free normal move action uh, select one enemy operative this operative moved within engagement range of during this move roll one attack dice uh, as if this operative is fighting in combat, can be re-rolled a result. If this operative hits, uh, you can immediately strike the enemy operative. Uh, so you do have fly, basically, from your jump pack that's on this model. Um, so essentially what's happening is when this model moves, it can move as if it has fly because it's like teleporting essentially and then it can basically do like a hit and run on the move so when you use this ability you move as if you have fly six inches your regular move you move past a guy that would put you in engagement range within an inch of that guy no matter where you stop during that move you get to make a strike on them when they have no ability to fight you back it's one single attack instead of your regular attacks uh, but it does allow you to basically like fly by, potentially hit for five, and then get out of range. And now a nice thing about the fly rule and kill team is it doesn't take into account elevation. Uh, so when you measure your move, you're going to measure six horizontally. But you could go one or two or three stories up in the air. So you're able to essentially get super far away with that limited move. And then obviously you still have the ability to do your free dash uh, in addition to the slicing attack. So pretty strong. Uh, alternatively, you can, you know, you could basically throw your knives, do a bunch of damage. You could jump attack past them, and that's your second APL. And then you can do your free dash. So pretty strong, pretty strong. Being able to do move nine, still throw your blades. Uh, and do a attack on the way is pretty strong. Uh, she is going to be one of the coolest operatives, I think, in this team and can do some crazy tricky stuff. Uh, so next we have the Void Scarred Karnathi. Again, same stats as everyone else. Shuriken Pistol and dual power weapons. So going to have two swords, uh, four attacks, hitting on threes, four six damage with lethal five plus and relentless. So with four attacks, lethal five plus, relentless, you should be able to easily get two or more crits. Probably going to be able to land all four of these attacks. So very devastating. Uh, and at six damage per crit, you should be able to do some serious damage. Um, and then each time this operative fights in combat, in the resolve successful hits of the combat, you can resolve one successful hit before the attacker. If you do so, the successful hit must be used to parry. Um, so basically this blade stance gives you the ability, whether you charge or they charge, to always have a parry first. So if someone charges you, you can parry one of their attacks right away. If you charge someone, you can parry one of their attacks right away, and then you can immediately resolve a hit as well. Uh, and then obviously they would get to go next. But 
theoretically, you'd be able to like stop them from critting you. Uh, pretty strong, pretty strong. Trying to like mitigate some of that damage um, with that ability. So obviously, you can choose not to do it and just trade blows with them as well. So. Uh, so next we have the Void Scarred Fate Dealer. Uh, so this is like the Ranger Sniper. It has a Ranger Long Rifle. Attacks 4. 2 plus Ballistic Skill. Uh, 3. 3 damage with Heavy, Silent, Mortal Wounds 3. So 3 on a regular hit. 6 on a crate. And 3 of those are Mortal Wounds. It does have the Heavy ability so you can max only move 3 inches. Uh, but it has Silent so you can always shoot from Conceal which is pretty awesome. Um, and because this is not uh, like an encumbering weapon, you could still move. You can shoot this in conceal and then you can dash. But realistically, you know, as long as you don't have a threat that's going to take away your conceal, it's really not even that much of an issue. You can use both your moves to get into position and then take a nice shot. Oh, actually, no, you couldn't because you would have to, you can only move three and then shoot heavy. So you could use your dash always, get into position, shoot. And then move your six to get into position for next round or get out of line of sight. Uh, and then the camel cloak. Uh, each time a shooting attack is made against this operative in the roll defense dice step of the shooting attack. Before rolling the defense dice, if it is in cover, one additional die can be retained as a successful normal save as a result of cover. So if you're in cover... Uh, you get two auto saves, and then you just roll, roll one die, and you want to four up on that last one. Because obviously you have three uh, defense dice. Uh, and then finally, the unique action. Take aim, one AP. Until the end of this operative's activation, the ranger long rifle this operative is equipped with gains the balanced six special rule. This operative equipment can perform this action if it is within three inches of an enemy operative. So you can basically pay one AP uh, to have balance, give yourself some rerolls. Can't do it if you're within three inches of an enemy. So uh, the same rule we saw on the basic Void Scarred, but obviously with a much better weapon. So, uh, so moving right along, next we have the Void Scarred Wayseeker. Uh, again, same stats as everyone else. And then we have a shuriken pistol and the witch staff. Uh, so the witch staff is four attacks, weapon skill and ballist, uh, weapon skill three plus, damage is three five. Uh, and then for the psychic power, you have the manifest psychic power ability for one AP. Psychic action, resolve a Corsair Void Scarred psychic power as specified on page 54. This operative can perform this action twice during the activation. This operative cannot perform this action whilst they're in engagement range of enemy operatives. Uh, so we'll take a look at those psychic powers soon. Uh, they're very good and you have the ability to use two in a turn. Obviously that's both your APL, but you do have that free dash. Um, and then also we have the voice guard Soul Weaver. We've seen the preview already of her. Uh, she does have a power weapon and trick and pistol. Uh, she does have two separate abilities, Soul Channel for one AP, uh, which is a psychic action. Select one friendly Void Scar Corsair, uh, visible and within six inches of this operative. Add one to the operative's APL. This operative cannot perform this action if it's within engagement range of an enemy operative. Basically like the comms ability to give one APL to someone else, it costs her one to do it. And then next we have the Soul Heal. Uh, one AP psychic action. Select one friendly Corsair Void Scarred operative visible to and within six inches of this operative. Uh, the operative regains a D3 lost wounds. This operative can perform this action whilst can perform this action twice during the activation, but cannot perform this action if it's within engagement range of an enemy operative. So it does a D3 heal. But you could spend 2 AP to just do it twice on two separate operatives on yourself. Or you could do it once and do the soul channel. You definitely have some options there. So because you're combining two basically operatives into one on this, the heal isn't quite as good. Because you have to spend 2 APL to heal 2D3. But you can split it. So that's pretty cool. Can't save a guy from dying though. You can only heal them. 
And then also you you have to give up one of those heals if you're going to use the soul channel ability uh, to give an APL. So very good, but sort of restrictive to be honest. Uh, and then next we have the Void Scarred Felark. Uh, so the Felark uh, is going to have nine wounds. So this is the leader of your kill team. Uh, everything else the same. Still movement, three circle, APL, two, GA, one, defense, three, save, four plus, but nine wounds. Uh, so the Neuro Disruptor can only be taken on this model, and I think that's the way to go. Four attacks hitting on twos, four, five damage, range six, AP, one, stun. So basically, if you score a crit, you're going to do five damage instead of four. Range is only six, so you're going to have to get up close. But with the AP1, you're going to take away one of their possible defense dice. And then if you do a crit to someone, uh, you're going to take away one of their AP as well. And then you have the ability to do a dash, shoot, and move all in the same activation. So uh, very strong. Hitting on twos. The other option is a shuriken pistol or shuriken rifle. Uh, and then you obviously have a power weapon as well, uh, no matter which route you go. So I think the Neuro Disruptor is the way to go. Uh, and then next we have coordinated strike. Each time this operative is activated, you can select one ready friendly uh, Corsair operative visible to and within square. After this operative's activation ends, you can activate the ready friendly operative. So basically it lets you like do a GA2 op activation, a chain activation. So you activate, you pick somebody else to activate as well. Costs you nothing. They have to be within three, so you want to keep somebody around, you know, planning on doing this ability, but <clears throat> gives you the ability to do like, you know, that coordinated strike, hence the name. Pretty cool. Uh, and then the take aim ability until the end of this operative turn. So we've seen this already. It basically just gives you the balanced ability. Uh, hitting on twos with this operative and probably not taking the shuriken rifle. So I don't know how, probably not going to be using that too often. Let's put it that way. All right, so our psychic powers. So the first time a friendly Corsair Psyker operative performs the manifest psychic power action, at the end of each activation, select one psychic power from the uh, below to be resolved. The second time a friendly Void Guard Psyker operative performs the manifest psychic power action in each of its activations, roll a d6. On a 1 to 2, the operative suffers three mortal wounds. On a 3+, plus, select a Psychic Power from the list. So, the first Psychic Power goes off automatically. The second one, on a 1-2, to two, it fails, and you take 3 mortal wounds. On a 3-6, through six, you cast the second power. So, pretty freaking awesome to be able to cast 2 Psychic Powers, obviously. Uh, so, Lightning Strike is a shoot action. Uh, and the stats are Attacks 4, Ballistic Seal 3. 4 or 5 damage with AP 1. So this is pretty good from a distance, obviously. Pop out, lightning strike, pop back. Um, warding shield is pretty awesome. Select one friendly Corsair operative visible to and within 6 of this operative until the end of the turning point. That operative has a 3 plus invulnerable save. Uh, so if you need someone to live very badly or you're planning on Sending someone into a super dangerous situation where you're going to go like trade and be vulnerable to like a plasma gunner or a charge or something like that. Well, really more shooting. Uh, you know, that's the time to do it. Uh, and then freezing grasp. Select one enemy operative visible to this operative until the end of the turning point. Subtract circle from the enemy operative's movement characteristic and it cannot perform the dash action. So you just have to be visible to them any range away they lose circle movement so two inches and they can't dash so if someone you could potentially like slow someone way down leave them out of position leave them exposed uh, etc to make sure that they can't get out get away so if someone leaves an operative exposed you pop out make sure they can't get away and then essentially even if they activate next they, they can't get away fast enough, and then you can rain down on them with a bunch of your guys. Uh, alternatively, you could stop someone from getting to a key area, 
Uh, you could stop someone from getting into position. Has a lot of really good uses. Very strong. Uh, and the next is Warp Fold. Uh, select any other friendly operative visible to and within six of this operative. That friendly operative and this operative both drop any object objective markers they are carrying. That friendly operative then swaps positions with this operative. Remove both from the kill zone and set them back up in their new positions. So this is interesting. I think the best way this would be used is if someone charges you. Or if you charge someone to tie them up and then you, you go next, you could basically swap spots with them. So you could swap a, let's say for instance, someone charges you just to tie you up or attacks you and you survive the combat, but you don't want to be in combat. You can basically switch positions with another operative and put them in combat where they would want to be and get you out of combat. Uh, or say, for instance, they're on the opposite side of you're exposed. They're on the other side of a, a wall. You could switch with them to save your psyker's life. I would imagine overall this is more of like a defensive move. Now it is possible you're going to switch places, teleport over there, and then do one of these other abilities, like lightning strike or something like that. Uh, say an operative fails to kill someone, and then they're left exposed, but you have a guy that's almost finished off. Maybe on your next activation, you switch spots with them, and then you finish that guy off. Uh, but I think overall this is more of a defensive one. So... Uh, you basically have like one lightning strike offensive, warp fold is defensive, the warding shield is defensive but very strong, and then the freezing, freezing grasp is sort of defensive too, but more like of a tactical move. But very good psychic powers. I really like it. Alright, so moving on along to the strategic ploys. Next we have the plunderers. So strategic ploys, obviously, you're going to do at the beginning of the phase. And it's going to infect, affect uh, multiple guys, possibly the whole kill team, depending on the wording. And then the tactical ploy, uh, it'll tell you exactly when to do it, but it's only going to affect one member, typically. Uh, so plunderers, one command point, select up to three friendly Corsairs. Each of those operatives can immediately perform a free dash action. When doing so, if you... If the mission you are playing has any objective markers that are not being carried by operatives, each selective operative must end their dash action closer to the nearest objective. So you have to be dashing towards the objective. But if you do this, um, you get to dash with everybody. So you move a quick you know, three with everybody. And then on top of that, You then have your turn to move everybody. So you could potentially move another six and then dash on your turn. So you're basically giving yourself like 12 inches worth of movement. You do have to end closer to an objective marker, but it doesn't say you have to run straight towards the objective marker. You just have to be slightly closer to it. So you could basically move parallel with the objective marker in any direction, like, like left or right, but you have to end slightly closer to it. Uh, pretty good. And it's for three operatives, so very strong. There's no restrictions. You don't have to be like in your own deployment zone or anything like that, uh, like a lot of the other ones do. A lot of the other ones, you have to be close to a board edge, like the Tau one, or the Vet Guard. You have to be in your deployment zone with this. You just have to be theoretically getting closer to an objective. Uh, so Rapid Strike is next, one command point until the end of the turning point. Each time a friendly Corsair Voids Guard operative fights in combat in the roll attack dice step of the combat. If you are the attacker and the target is not ready, you can select one of your normal hits to be a critical hit. So basically, if they've already taken their activation and then you attack them, one of your crits becomes a critical hit. So very strong, does affect obviously your whole team. So, could be very good. Um, you know, especially with a bunch of power weapons that are already, like, critting on fives. All of a sudden, 
you know, you're basically like maybe getting two or three crits with every guy could be very strong. Uh, so outcast one command point until the end of the turning point. Uh, each time a Corsair operative fights in combat or makes a shooting attack in the roll attack dice step of the shooting attack or combat. Uh, if it is more than six inches from friendly operative, if you retain any critical hits, you can select one of your failed hits to be retained as a successful normal hit. So if you're up close shooting within six shooting or if you're in combat fighting, if you retain any crits, one of your misses becomes a hit. So very strong. Again, a lot of your stuff is critting on fives. So you're now turning like your one miss into a hit. Very good. Uh, so then Eldari Agility, one command point until the end of the turning point. Each time a friendly Corsair Void Scarred operative activated, it can use the Eldari Agility. If it does so, it cannot perform fight or shoot actions during that activation but each time it performs a dash fallback or normal move action it can move an additional triangle so if you choose not to fight or shoot whenever you dash fallback or normal move you can move an extra inch so a little extra speed that is worded kind of strange though um, so next we have our tactical poise uh, opportunistic fighters one command point use this tactical ploy when an enemy operative performs a fallback action before it moves that enemy operative suffers a d3 mortal wounds for each friendly corsair void scarred operative within engagement range so if they go to fall back you play this they take a d3 mortal wounds if they fall back from two of your guys they take two d3 mortal wounds so again pretty cool sort of like a gotcha if they know about it they're probably less likely to fall back but at least you get to punch them if they do uh, light fingers one command point uses stack they'll play during a friendly course or void card operatives activation uh, until the end of that opera activation the operative can perform for free one mission action or pickup action even if it is within engagement range so it basically lets you pay a command point to do a mission action or a pickup action. And also it takes away the restriction because normally you cannot do that if you're within engagement range. So that could be crucial. Uh, deadly Ambush, one command point. Use this tactical play after an enemy operative finishes an action in which it moved. Select one friendly Corsair Void Scarred operative that is not within engagement range of the enemy operative. That friendly operative can immediately perform a free charge action, but can only move up to square and must finish that move within engagement range of the enemy operative. Otherwise, it cannot move. So after an enemy operative finishes an action in which it moved, select a Corsair and move it within engagement range of the enemy operative. So you perform a charge up to three inches. So if somebody finishes a move within three inches of you, you can use this ability to basically charge into them. So pretty strong. If they're trying to get away, if they're trying to charge after one of your other guys, you can basically like double team them. Uh, pretty cool little move there. Uh, and then one step ahead, one command point. Use this tech to deploy at the end of the first turning point. All right, so the end of the initiative phase of the first turning point. You can immediately, you can redeploy up to two friendly Corsairs. They must be set up within your deployment zone and you can change their orders. So you can change your orders and put them somewhere else. Uh, so it's like a little extra like tactical boost. So pretty cool. Uh, faction Corsairs, uh, TAC Ops. So you have obviously three TAC Ops, special, goal, special like missions available to them. In addition to their normal missions, uh, when you go to select them at random. Uh, so Flawless Raid. Uh, so you can reveal the stack up in the target reveal step of any turning point after the second. So you can't do it in the first or the second. You have to do it in the third or the fourth. If you had more victory points than your opponent, at the start of the turning point, you score one victory point. 
If you achieve the first action at the start of the subsequent turn, you score one victory point. So you have to do this after the second. So that, that means you have to do it in the third and the fourth. So in order to get two points on this, you have to be in the lead on victory points going into the third at the start of the turning point. So that's interesting. So you basically have to be outscoring your opponent at the end of the second. And then you reveal this. Uh, and you get a point in the third. And then if you're still in the lead at the end of the third, in the beginning of the fourth, you get another one. So interesting. Or really the end of the fourth. But yeah, you have to be in the... Basically, if you're in the lead going into the second and you can keep the lead till the end of the game, you get two points. If you just are in the lead going into uh, the second, uh, you will just get one point. But pretty cool. Kind of gives you a little bit more of like the surprise aspect to it. Soul Guard, maybe. Uh, Corsair Voice Guard. Faction Tack Up 2. Reveal this Tack Up on the target reveal step of the first turning point. Each time a friendly Void Guard operative is incapacitated, before it is removed from the kill zone, place one of your spirit zone tokens underneath this operative, as close as possible to the center of the base. The pickup action can be performed upon your spirit zones by friendly Corsairs. Uh, operatives can carry any number of spirit zone tokens, and your spirit zone tokens can be picked up by friendly Corsairs. Uh, while within engagement range of an enemy operative. Okay. So you can pick up any of them. You just have to get to where your guy died at. It doesn't matter if that person is in combat or whatever. You can always pick up as many as possible. You just have to get close to it. At the end of the battle, if no friendly operatives have been incapacitated, you score two points. That's pretty unlikely. Otherwise, at the end of the battle, if a friendly operatives are carrying at least half of your spirit zones, you score one. At the end of the battle, if friendly operatives are carrying all of your spirit zones, you score one. That's a tough one. You're probably going to lose people. Let's be real. You're always going to lose somebody. So, realistically, you're going to get one if you pick up even one spirit stone. Um... Uh, and then you have to pick up all the spirit stones to get two. So you got to be running around in like pairs pretty much. And hope none of the pairs get wiped out. That, that's a tough one. That's very hard. Uh, so opportunist is next. Koister, Void Guard, Faction, Top Cap 3. Reveal this stack up in the target reveal step of the first turning point. Select three enemy operatives. Each time one of them is incapacitated. Before it is removed from the kill zone, place one of your loot tokens underneath the operative. As close as possible to the center of the base. The pickup action can be performed upon that loot token by friendly operatives. Operatives can carry any number of loot tokens. So you reveal this at the beginning of the first turning point, and then at the end of the battle, if friendly operatives are carrying one or more of your loot tokens, you score one victory point. At the end of the battle, if friendly operatives are carrying three of your loot tokens score one victory point so very similar this one's a little more achievable um, I think it's realistic to think you could pick up three of them uh, the only problem is if you pick one up and then the guy dies you would drop it again so then somebody else has to get over there and pick it up those are tough I'm not gonna lie those are not easy so uh, but yeah, that's it. That is uh, everything for the Void Scarred Corsairs. I really like them. I was hoping there would be 10 operatives, but I think 9 is going to be pretty strong. Uh, they have some pretty strong shooting. Definitely going to be more tricky than anything. Uh, they are for sure fragile, glass cannon style. Uh, but they can all hit pretty hard. I mean, the ability to have power weapons. They're similar in many ways to the Harlequin team in that they can hit very hard, but they're very fragile. They have a little more range shooting, a little more like kind of tricks to them, uh, but I like them. I like them. So let's check out the equipment and then we are all done. Any equipment marked with a star can be selected a maximum of once and each operative can be equipped with no more than one of each item. So Diaturnal Mantle, two points. Obviously you get 10 to spend. Uh, so each time a shooting attack is made against this operative, if the ranged weapon has the torrent or blast special rule, the 
This operative is treated as having a save characteristic of 3+. plus. So they already have 4 plus save. So this is not really that great. If you're going against a team that has a ton of like flamers or blast weapons, this could be okay, but I can't imagine that's the way to go. Uh, plasma grenades, no restriction, 3 EP each. Uh, they're obviously very good. Attacks 4, 3 plus to hit, 3, 4 damage. Uh, range is 6, blast is circle, indirect and limited. So each guy can only throw one of these. You could give it to potentially 3 guys for 9 points. Uh, very good. Grenades are very good. Um, and most of the time, you can catch somebody bundled up to where you could hit two guys. They're pretty quick, too. So you could probably get within six and get into position to hit multiple guys pretty easily. Um, definitely strong on this team, I think. A lot like the Harlequins. Uh, so Corsair Blade, one EP. Uh, equipped with the following weapon. Corsair Blade, attacks three, weapon skill three, three, four. This is terrible. Uh, like all the other attacks are four. So I don't think you would ever take this. Maybe just if you have one point to spend. And like you have uh, one of your gunners that has just their fists. Uh, ocular scanner, two points. And this one is limited to one per kill team. Ocular scan ability, one AP until the end of the operative's activation. Range weapons it is equipped with gain the no cover special rule. Uh, that could be good. You could use it for your sniper maybe or for your blast weapon. Um, it, it could be okay. It's not particularly amazing and you have to spend one AP on it. So I don't know. Uh, runes of protection, two points. Gains the following ability for the battle. Runes of protection. Doesn't cost anything to use. This is just in effect. Uh, each time a shooting attack is made against this operative in the roll defense dice step of that shooting attack. If that shooting attack was made as a result of manifest psychic power action, you can reroll any or all of your defense dice. Um, so this is really strong against only like psychic teams. So if you're going up against, you know, like the Thousand Suns, one of those teams, it's probably very good. The Grey Knights don't really have like an offensive psychic power. Uh, this team has an offensive psychic power, so maybe for a mirror match it could be good, but not gonna. That's like a real situational, like sideboard. Uh, so, Mistfield, 3 EP, limited to 1. Uh, Void Scarred, Fell Arc only. The operative gains the following ability for the battle Mystified. While a friendly Corsair Void Scarred operative is within circle for the um, of this operative that operative have as a five plus invulnerable save uh, so mistfield restricted to one three ep void scarred fell arc only this operative gains the following ability for the battle uh, mistfield while a friendly corsair void scarred operative is within circle of this operative that operative has a five plus invulnerable save so it's basically a 4-inch radius from this operative granting a 5-plus invulnerable save. So you would have it and then anybody else within 4. So not bad, not amazing though. You already have a 3-plus, so this gives you a 5-plus invulnerable. So potentially against like a plasma weapon or fusion or something like that, uh, this could be pretty good, especially for multiple models, but mm, it's okay. It's more, I mean, if you're going for defensive, maybe if your opponent has a bunch of, if you go up against like, uh, maybe like a Scion guard team where they're going to have like two plasmas and two maltas and you just need some invulnerable saves, that could be good. Uh, something like that. So situational, not bad, but hopefully it doesn't come to that. Honestly. Oh wait, four plus. They normally have four plus saves. So this gives them five. Plus. It's not bad. Uh, so Lodestar Helm, again, restricted to 1, 2 EP, Voice Guard, Wayseeker only. So these are like specific pieces of equipment only for these operatives. Uh, this operative gains the following ability for the battle. Uh, Lodestar Helm, the second time this operative performs the Manifest Psychic Power action in each of its activations, it does not suffer any mortal wounds as a result of rolling a 1 or 2. 
note this does not allow you to select a psychic power to be resolved. Okay, so for 2 EP, uh, you basically give your um, way seeker this helm, and then on a 1 or a 2 for the second power, it still fails, but you don't take any damage. So that's pretty strong. I can see that being nice. Now, is it worth giving up a plasma grenade for? I don't know. I mean, realistically, so far, arguably, the plasma grenades are the way to go. But I could see taking the Lodestar Helm. Uh, and then we have the Pathfinder Cloak, Void Scarred Fate Dealer. Uh, this operative gains the following ability for the battle for 2 EP. Pathfinder Cloak, while this operative has a Conceal Order, it is always treated as having a Conceal Order regardless of any other rules. Okay, that's pretty sick. So basically your Pathfinder can always shoot from Concealed and can never be shot because it's always Concealed. That's very good. So I could see taking the Pathfinder Cloak and the Lodestar Helm for four and then taking two Plasma Grenades for six. And that would give you your ten. Now alternatively, you could do one Plasma Grenade in the Mist Field if you really needed those invulnerable saves. But I don't think the Mist Field is going to be... I think it looks better on paper. You really don't want to keep your guys super bunched up just to gain an invulnerable save because then you're putting yourself vulnerable to like a grenade or something like that. So... Uh, but yeah, that's it. I think they look great. Uh, I really like this team. I love the models. I cannot wait to get my hands on them. Definitely will be doing a painting tutorial. Definitely will be doing some strategic stuff once I like break it down a little more. There's definitely some combos here. Um, I think this is going to be like your number one hit and run team. They're going to be able to do what Marine teams or what three APL teams do right now like Harlequins without the third APL. So essentially to be able to move shoot and then dash back into cover out of line of sight whatever or to be able to dash take a shot and then move your full move away uh you know very very strong now if you're looking to charge into combat though keep in mind you cannot dash and then charge so you can do your regular charge and then you could fight or you could shoot and then do your regular charge and not fight but you cannot dash and do all the other stuff. But they have the ability to do a free dash with a ploy. I mean, this is a strong team. I like them. I'm really excited. Uh, so let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, sorry, the picture is not amazing quality. And uh, obviously, I'm looking over this as we talk about it. So I'm kind of giving my opinions. Not everything's going to be 100% right. I may have missed some stuff. But uh, overall, very nice team. I think the way to go is going to be just what we said in the beginning. Um, with uh, no regular guys and no heavy gunner. And then take the Blast Gunner and one of each of everybody else. Very strong team though. I like them. They're going to be cool. They're going to be fun. They're going to be swingy though. You either win big or lose big. Uh, it's probably not going to have too many close games. Because they are going to be very fragile. The 4 plus save is nice. 9 models is still good. But you have slightly better saves than somebody like Guard does. And you know they're going to have 14 guys. You're going to have 9. So... You don't want to be trading one for one, obviously, but, you know, and then against a Marine team or something like that, you know, or Harlequins, they're going to have six or eight models. So they're going to have only a couple less than you. Harlequins, one less model than you. They're going to be far more durable, uh, but not, well, the Harlequins are going to be just as quick almost as well because they can dodge cover. So these are going to be comparable to Harlequins, a little more like unique, a little more tricky. I'm looking forward to seeing the uh, White Dwarf team for the uh, Void Dancers as well. And then we'll know then which is better, the Void Scar or the Void Dancers, and what's the difference. I have a feeling those vo Void Dancers are going to be amazing. Uh, they were obviously already the best of the Compendium teams, the Harlequins. And then obviously getting beefed up uh, basically with two characters instead of just two basic guys going to make them even better. So looking forward to that one. I'll definitely take a look at that as soon as I get my copy of White Dwarf. Hopefully you enjoyed the video today. Let me know if you noticed anything I didn't. Uh, sorry the screenshots are not amazing quality or anything. I'm just happy to be able to get these in advance. Uh, again, make sure to uh, check out Glass Half Dead. Show him some love uh, for basically uh, allowing us to grab these uh, screenshots. And uh, his early access to uh, Games Workshop stuff. So, 
Uh, but that's it for today. If you like the review, if you're interested in all kinds of rules, reviews, breakdowns, uh, anything from unboxings to tutorials for painting, modeling, conversions, etc. Uh, if you're interested in taking a look at commissions as they go out of the studio, make sure to like and subscribe for Warhammer 40,000, Kill Team, Necromunda, Age of Sigmar, and Warcry content as well. Uh, I'm Warhammer Man, this is Warhammer Man Studios, and I'm out of here.